to make sure my hair is perfect. Freaking perfect. Okay, guys. Welcome back. I am Dustin. And we are bringing episode 3 of Book Talk. We are continuing on with the story of Jameson. We're going to read a little bit more. So, bam. I believe we left off on page 15. Page. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'll start at the top of the page. They played you fool. I'm, I'm sorry, but you don't get paid. I have a mission for you, but you'll have to wait till this afternoon, Tyler replied. Jameson threw the phone across the room. He had it out toward the living room. His mom already cleaned up the mess from last night. And at the table was the usual outdated oatmeal. In other words, breakfast was ready. Five minutes went by before Jameson was finished. He honestly for once wanted to stay home with his mother. Time flew by, and before he knew it, noon has ar had arrived. He would be getting a phone call shortly. Jameson was still furious. He always need needs the money. Jameson went back to his bedroom to find his phone. And as he walked in, <clears throat> the phone rang. Jameson answered it. The next job I have for you, it's kind of the same as the last time. There's a kid who lives across town by the name of Gavin. You listen to everything he has to say. He lives in an apartment complex across town. You should know which one. And I am sure you were. I'm sure. Oh, what the fuck did I write? You should know which one. The one I used to live in when I was younger. Jameson replied. Yes, Tyler said. That one. Jameson heard the phone click. Now all Jameson had to do was meet a dude named Gavin. Nothing seemed wrong with any of this. But that was part of the job title. Not knowing what you're going to get yourself into. So, like usual, he changed into his working clothes. A worn out t-shirt and blue jeans and his kicks. He said goodbye to his mom. And he walked out the door. He started out the door and walked to the left. Like he usually does. The old apartment complex. Tyler was talking about. Tyler was talking about. Wasn't very far. It was a little past the park. A short walk. About a half hour later. He had arrived. The apartments were run down and had no life of succeeding. Gavin would be hard to find. A lot of people stayed here. The owner didn't really charge rent anymore. Too many people weren't doing well. They could come here and people would help each other out. They would survive and die together. To try and find Gavin, Jameson went toward the front office building, the building where people would come to check out rooms. Jameson was on the sidewalk in front of the complex, a few simple strides and he was at the front door. Sorry, my nose is kind of stuff. Uh, when he opened the door, the old bell still rang. No one was surprisingly at the front desk anymore. No, sorry, no one was at the front desk. It didn't surprise Jameson because no one was ever here. It had become a shelter for people 
yet they all helped each other out. Jameson headed towards the back, behind the desk. A long hallway tunneled. I spelled that word wrong. Tunneled. Behind it. And Jameson knew he had to go down it. So, he started down the hallway, and at the end, he found a door to the left. And a door to the right. Jameson opened the door to the right, and found stairs going up to the next floor. One step at a time. One step at a time till he reached the top of the stairwell. And at the top, Jameson noticed so many more doors. So, Jameson yelled, Gavin. Gavin. A few seconds went by before Jameson heard the man's voice. He would never forget that voice because Jameson wouldn't see that about that. Uh, he would never forget that voice because Jameson wouldn't see him that much afterwards. A tall, slim man turned the corner and walked right up to Jameson. You must be the boy Tyler was talking about. Right this way, Gavin said. He led Jameson into the third door on the left. Some things are meant to be forgotten. But that was hard when you see unforgettable things. <coughs> the room was small, and the windows were covered by jet black curtains. In other words, the room was almost pitch black, except for a few lamps. This would be the last time the two would ever have natural conversation. Now, Jameson, Tyler is an old friend of mine, Gavin said. You didn't finish your contract, and you made him upset. Gavin continued. Gavin reached towards the dresser next to him. Jameson was in trouble now. And he could tell what, what was about to happen was probably going to hurt. Gavin pulled out a pair of shiny brass knuckles. And before Jameson knew it, he was on the ground. The pain shot through his head. From the contact the brass knuckles had made with his eye. Gavin shouted, Tyler is serious when he means finish the job. Punch after punch. They all landed on Jameson. Less than a minute and his nose was bleeding. These were the risks Jameson took, not finishing contract, not fin not finishing his contract. He was laying on the ground. The only thing flowing through his mind were regrets. Jameson did not see that coming, and again, he couldn't see at all. Gavin was stronger than Jameson expected. Jameson doesn't like to be pushed around, though, so he acted fast. Well, Gavin didn't see that one coming either, and Jameson grabbed a lamp and introduced it to the back of Gavin's head. All of this happened fast, and Jameson ran out the door. With his body aching, it didn't make escaping easy. Jameson was going to have a little talk with Tyler. First, 
He needed sleep and rest. This day needed to be over. Running, running hurt a lot. Jameson was telling himself repeatedly, forget about everything that just happened. Running down the stairs and outside, he wanted to see his mom. Jameson ran past everything, and at the same time, he was running away from his problems. He was running away from his broken family. While Jameson was running, he tripped on a rock. <laughs> that made everything hurt again. He was running away from his job and his problems. He turned on his block and made the final sprint to his house. Past all the houses with no one inside. They were empty, and Jameson's house was on the brink of being empty too. He turned toward his pathway and ran up the stairs. Jameson's mom was passed out on the couch. He went to bed. He fell asleep moments later. Morning came fast. His face was smashed in. He walked into the living room. And, well, his mom had this reaction. Jameson. Why? Just why? <clears throat> Mom, please don't freak out, Jameson said. It went on for a while, and he had to walk away from it in the end. The rest of the day, Jameson did nothing. He had to rest. His face hurt more than anything. Second. There was nothing really fun to do at their house but read and sleep. Jameson may not be in school anymore, but he still loved to read. Going on different adventures and mostly not living his life for short periods of time. Jameson had a small collection, but the one thing that stuck out the most was they were his books. So, Jameson passed time by reading, and he liked to stay smart. He liked to stay as smart as he could. Dinner time came faster than he expected, so he washed his hands and went to the table. They were having TV dinners. They weren't the best quality, but it was food. They both ate in silence and didn't say anything to each other. The rest of the night, he stayed in his room and laid on his bed trying to pass out. Well, that time finally came and he fell asleep. The nights were long and always dragged on. The nights were cold when you didn't have enough blankets. The nights especially dragged when your bed was uncomfortable. Jameson never complained about what he had because times were hard. Wake up, Jameson. We're leaving in 30 minutes, his mom said. Okay, mom. Jameson was now up and he replied to his mom. No later than a half hour. No later than a half hour, it took Jameson to get his nicest clothes on. Their car was on the brink of falling apart, like everything else. But they piled in. And the car rattled and screeched. They were off. Mom, where are we going? Jameson asked. To the hospital. After his mom said that, they were both silent for the rest of the trip. 
The hospital was an average three-story building, but the doctors sometimes didn't even know what they were doing. Jameson's stomach dropped as they pulled into the parking lot. They found the nearest parking spot, and they both got out. The front doors opened, and they were in their waiting, and they were in the waiting area. Jameson, go sit down. His mom said. He found the nearest spot, and he watched his mom talk to a young girl at the front desk. He couldn't make out what they were saying. But from the looks of it, his mom had an appointment. His mom turned to her, his mom turned toward him and said, Come on. He walked over slowly, but on the way there, he thought about how much he truly loved his mom. His mom was there for everything since day one. Jameson had done some bad things, but he would never hurt his mom. The back door opened, and a man with a white coat on said, Right this way. They both followed him to the room to the left. The room to the left. And they all walked inside. <clears throat> um, do you want him in here? It might be hard, the doctor said. He's a big boy. He can stay. His mother replied. Jameson sat there and didn't say a single word. The doctor was saying so much. And a tear, a single tear almost came to Jameson's face. Oh my god, I spoke Jameson like the alcohol right there. <laughs> Jameson's face. The news was unbearable. It was horrible. It was a disaster. I felt like time had stopped, and he was sitting there forever. The doctor was only doing his job. Uh, it was like time to stop, and he was sitting there forever. The doctor was only doing his job, but Jameson wished that he would, would have never said that. The doctor left the room to give them some privacy. Not even halfway through the day, and he was already wishing it would be over. He looked at his mom, gave a faint smile. The doctor came back in and said the expense the expenses would be a number Jameson chose to for, chose to forget. The doctor left and that was the time and that was that time for them to leave. And that was the time for them to leave. They were both silent. Neither one of them wanted to talk out of the hospital and into the car. They both loaded up. And they were off. Neither one of them talked. And that changed once they were inside their house. I'm sorry, son. Once I figure out how to get the money, it will be fine. His mom said. Jameson didn't reply, but went straight to went straight to his room. He picked up his phone and made some calls. I need the biggest contract you got, Jameson said. Okay, this one is tough, and it pays the most, the voice on the other side said. He hung up. He also skipped dinner that night. Jameson might be making enough money soon enough. He stayed in his room for the rest of the night. Yet he felt bad because he should be visiting with his mom. Hours went by before he finally fell asleep that night. Because a lot had happened that day. That morning, Jameson's face, and, okay, sorry, it says that morning. Jameson's face in the morning no longer contained a smile. His mother had to make a trip to the hospital the previous day. She came home crying, for she was dying. He knew that the, he knew the South Bronx was no place for her. And he needed money fast. 
Jameson passed by the mirror in the hallway near the front door. His reflection showed a young teenager, no older than 18, with used clothes on him. Every time he opened the front door, it was old, creaky, annoying. He walked outside. The sun was blinding. His neighborhood was not wealthy, but still not dead. He knew a person who could give him enough money for his mom's surgery a little downtown, a little ways downtown. It was from a man Jameson knew across town that he had met a few weeks back. He is no older than 34, but he is a shadowy figure. His house was across town and across the Bronx. Jameson walked fast because that night the Bronx was a different story. Jameson passed by someone on the sidewalk. They had a disgusted look on their face. He said, how is it going for you? Jameson whispered softly, fine, Gavin. The walk was quiet. Some empty neighborhoods that once filled families that had dreams of making it big in life. He continued his walk there. 20 minutes later, he was at the front doorstep. The house was worn down, missing windows, and the paint was decaying. Walking up to the house was not the scariest part. Knocking on the door was. He knocked on the door once, and it echoed through the house. The door opened slowly. There he was, Jameson's father. Come in, his father continued. The large gray wall the large gray wall was littered with pictures of people. Some had an X through them with an amount of money on the bottom. Jameson's father's name was Tyler. And he was no longer in Jameson's life. Tyler pointed at the wall at the wall at a picture and simply stated Ten thousand for her. Jameson studied the picture. It showed a scared girl who is now in trouble. Sure, Tyler. I accept. Jameson solemnly, solemnly responded. You will need this. Tyler pulled out a heavy but maneuverable gun and handed it to his son. Jameson opened up the door and ran towards the sidewalk. It's getting dark. I need to return home, he thought to himself. The walk home seemed faster because he ran faster than usual. His own house was no better than anyone else's. The door was unlocked. It made the usual creaking and annoying sound. When he opened it, he saw his mom on the couch, her eyes red from crying. Uh, he walked in slowly and closed the door behind him. Jameson pulled out the gun and pulled the trigger three times. The gun screeched each time the trigger was pulled. Broken body laid on the floor. The wind broke the swift, swiftly quieting silence. One thought ran through Jameson's head, and it was that he was getting paid. The target was his mom. It took him two hours to bury the body. It took him two hours to bury his mom six feet under the already buried dead cat. Jameson cleaned himself up and sat down on the couch. He turned his favorite TV show on. And he watched. The program started. This next part is the TV show. Wilson's day started off with the usual bowl of cereal. The clock struck 6 a.m. School started at 7.35 a.m. Wilson wanted to get there early because Wilson's friends would be there. They arrived every day at the same time. Before Wilson knew it, he was at the front steps of the school. Sorry, just something felt really weird.
we're gonna end the video there. I realize we've been going for like about 27 minutes. Okay, guys. We have been going for a while. That is it for this episode three. Stay tuned for episode four. Peace.